Hey everyone, welcome to day two of the Juneteenth conference. Um, thank you all so much for spending your weekends with us. We really appreciate it. Um, I definitely want to say, you know, again, like I said, I really appreciate everyone spending your time with us. Even after this conference is over, let's make sure we keep the conversation going. Make sure you follow the presenters, make sure you, you know, follow up with the organizers and stuff so we could keep all this positive energy and conversation going on. Now, this is track two, and right now we're gonna have a speaker of ours, um, Daywood Idris. He's gonna come on and talk to us about the future of tech and how people could keep in touch as it evolves. So I'm gonna fade to the back a little bit and I'm gonna let him take over. And for the next hour or so, he's gonna talk to us a little bit about, uh, about his topic. So I'll let you have it. Awesome, thank you so much, Ciso, for having me and thanks to everyone who has um, supported this since yesterday, it's been amazing. And I hope uh, we get to take a lot away. Um, so this talk is actually on the future of technology and how to keep in touch whilst it evolves. This is an essential topic, but let me just take it step by step so that you could you can just get the gist of what I'm trying to communicate to you. So as tech evolves, two years of my career was wasted. I felt bitter, anger, deceived, and tech not being a thing for me. I was trying, I learned, I overlearned, I'll put it, because I, I went through a series of C sharps, a series of C++, C, Java, and Co. And I was told tech was the place for everyone. I was told that tech was the land of opportunity while living in my country. I don't need to go to anywhere. And I was told that tech would be the thing that would really you know, get me to my dream job, right? And I felt it was a lie. It was not as they said. So I felt I was deceived at a point because, you know, investing two years of my career into learning a lot of, you know, uh, languages from here, uh, from, from one point to another, and not being able to develop something was like, you know, I felt very deceived, right? And I, I pointed fingers to the institution that trained me, right? I pointed fingers to that institution that made me, that gave me the fundamentals of programming, right? I, in 2014, I knew uh, I was new to programming, right? So I was trained and I, I felt like they gave me knowledge which I wasn't supposed to have. They could have given me simple things. That's how I felt, right? So I blame the institution that trained me. And I wanted to give up, honestly. Uh, at a point, I just, I just felt like it, it's enough. I mean, wasting one year, two years, I was doing fun stuff, but it wasn't about fun. I wanted to build something productive for the world, right? I wanted to change. I, I had I could change the world with tech, so I wanted to change it. But I knew I still hadn't achieved more, so I kept striving. And I knew that giving up was not an option anymore because, like, wasting two years, there was, like, no point of turning back, right? So giving back was not an option. And... I was just, you know, lucky to have met my savior. I had a friend who said, you know, stop everything. Stop learning everything you are learning right now, Dawood. Let's start afresh, right? And that was a refreshing moment for me. That was like so much power for me, right? And this friend name is called Kati Franz, okay? So Kati, we met in 2016. Um, Kati was studying in, um, in a university in Russia. And he was studying aerospace engineering. And in 2015, Kati said that um, around 2015, he had never heard of programming or he, has, he had never been introduced to programming. Let's, let's keep it that way. So when he got to Russia, you know, he was from Cameroon. So when he got to Russia, he, he tried, he studied uh, a lot. And whilst in Russia, he felt, you know, lonely, right? So loneliness led him to be curious, you know, search on the internet for, you know, information. And he came across programming and then he, he came across some links. He clicks on them, he clicked on them and then he found, you know, golden, you know, opportunity, golden resource, which was Laracast. So Laracast is actually a website, laracast.com, just key it into your browser. And um, it's managed by Jeffrey Way. Jeffrey Way is a PHP, is a, is a software engineer, I think web developer, so to say. And he is well vested in, you know, PHP, uh, Node.js and all the stuff. So um, 
Kati was lucky to find this golden opportunity. The very year that, you know, he went online and searched for it, he was able to get a link that could lead him to, you know, learn whatever he wanted to learn. That was 2015, right? And by 2016, when I met Kati, Kati was building applications like, you know, um, Facebook clone, YouTube clone, this kind of stuff. And it was amazing, right? And when I, I heard Kati telling me that, that would... I had never heard of programming in 2015. I was like, wow. So you mean you just took that like one year to be able to do all this stuff? He said, yes. And I was like, okay. So it means I never met, you know, the right resources. Maybe that is why. So um, Kati introduced me to Laraka. So I stopped learning for, for you know, for four months. I, I didn't go to any of the languages I used to do. The, the Visual Basic .NET, the, yeah, I mean, all the languages I used to do, I stopped, okay? And I followed the rules of Kati. So I registered, took a course, took foundation to PHP. I was doing PHP, but I wasn't doing object-oriented PHP. But when I went to Laracas, there was object-oriented PHP there, right? So I took a course on that, and that even opened, you know, my, my, my mind to understand what exactly object-oriented is about, right? So... I followed it for like four months. And after that, I knew, okay, Daoud, now I am whom I, I, I wanted to be. Like, I'm on a path now. I'm, I'm on the right path. So I was lucky to have found, you know, Kati. And Kati was, you know, my savior. Now, the point is, what are you up to, right? It's not about me. It's, it's, it's the story, I'm relating this story so that you could pick something from it. But the point is, what can you also, you know, take away from my, you know, lessons that I learned? Over two years of wasting time to learn many languages which were making sense to me. I was just, you know, learning. And the fun thing is that, you know, when you're learning coding, you just keep doing this calculator stuff. And then you, I mean, they are fun. You are, you are making progress, but that is not essentially what you are supposed to do, right? You are supposed to build something that could potentially have, you know, um, a change on someone, at least one person's life, right? So um, let me just zoom in a bit uh, and then show you this, all right? So in here, I'm just going to take this as an example. Um, I have how to become a backend developer. I'm a backend developer, so I would go with this path, okay? So um, imagine that you are a backend developer. Let me just zoom out, give a credit to this guy, okay? Uh, whoops. Okay, I'm not able to go back. Just just a minute. Zoom back again. Okay, cool. So I, I went through um, online to find, you know, um, guidance, right? Uh, because I wanted to give you the best. Um, so I went online, did some Bing search, and then I came across, you know, um, this article written by this guy here we never met before. And I was like, okay, this is exactly what I learned, right, to become who I am today right so essentially sharing that with you would really you know be of help so let's just zoom in again so that you could see it clear okay let me zoom again okay so pick it up right from here so this can be quite confusing but as always when you see a map look for the legend um so personal recommendation possibilities and pick any you can see so the yellow talks about the personal recommendation from the guy which i think i i actually agree with you know this path that he drew he drew for how to become a back-end developer or how to become a web developer in 2017 that's what he said but i think it still it still works even now it still works if you want to become a back-end developer this is an amazing opportunity for you so um, considering that the yellow is a personal recommendation, uh, and the second, which is the ash, would be possibilities. And then the last would be pick any, okay? So you want to become a backend developer, okay? Let's pick up, you know, let's come to this, you know, send the center here. And then you can see we have arrows pointing to four different, you know, um, things that you could pick. So as part of them, include PHP 7, that's just PHP, let's say a language, Python, another language, right? And you could pick whether you want uh, Ruby, whether you want Node.js, right, an environment. So you can pick any of this and just, you know, you know the, the mistakes is that when people get started with programming, they hear of a lot of things that people are talking about and then they get carried away. So he's learning um, C sharp, okay. 
and he hears that okay they said no this is the coolest thing in 2019 all right so i'm just going to pause this let's learn note right and then he hears that php is the coolest thing now then he jumps on it right so when you do that you absolutely you're not going to get anything from it right but if you take your time and pick one of them and master it very well that is when you get the path so let me pick the path you know among these four i just choose php7 okay so imagine that you pick that you want to become a PHP developer. So what would you need? You would need something like a framework. You need a testing, and you will need, you know, package manager. Um, and yeah, so you can see. So we have package manager, we have framework, we have testing, we have debug profiler over here. All right. So let's assume that you want to become a PHP developer. Um, on the Laravel stack. So you become, you, you pick the framework called Laravel and you make sure you master PHP 7 first, right? The object oriented things you need to know and all those stuff, you need to, you know, take grabs of them. Once you are fine with that, you move on to pick, you know, a framework. And when you pick a framework like Laravel, there's some similarity in almost all these guys, okay? So let me just point down here. So you want to become a backend developer. You've chosen a stack. Now, as part of your stack, you would master the testing tools, right? You master the PHP you need, the PHP spec, uh, and all, all right? And you would pick a framework. You would master the level, the symphonies, and all those stuff. You would try just, you don't need to master everything here. That's for sure. So for I, for instance, I only use Laravel and Symfony, right? And I use PHP unit, PHP spec, stuff like that, PSR. And then you also use, you know, package manager. So every PHP developer, um, I mean, yeah, not every PHP developer, but every PHP experienced PHP developer should know about Composer, right? So used to install packages um, when you are developing your application. Okay. And similarly, if you are even in a Node community, then definitely you will know of Yen or NPM. So stuff like that. This is absolutely amazing. Then you pick your stack, you come down here, so when we when we look down to this path, you can see almost all of them, okay? Almost all these ones. Um, you will be required to know these guys, okay? This guy is right here. So web server, RESTful APIs, you need to know about MVC, model view controller, you need to know about authentication, you know, to, you need to know about the solid principle case, you need to know about Rex, you need to know about your security, you need to know about I mean, these are things that it's recommended that you know about them because every web developer deals with a web server. At a point, you build a RESTful APIs, right? Um, say your back end is supposed to, you know, connect with, um, you know, an external device or something, application. Then you need API to be developed so that, you know, the, the external application can consume it, stuff like that. So one thing that you should know very well is that no matter the stack that you choose, among this, you will end up here, all right? You will know this web server, this RESTful API, but the MVC pattern, right? It's a common thing among all languages, like uh, whether you are even doing Java, right? I think about one month ago, someone got in touch and told me that they've given them assignments in school and then they were like, okay, um, you know, I don't know, they should build something, but using the MVC design pattern, right? So whether you like it or not, you would come across this and then you'll be able to master it, okay? So assuming that you are done choosing a stack, PHP 7, you've mastered your PHP unit, Laravel, PSL, you've mastered your composer, you are looking for debug, uh, the debugger. So there, there was one I used to use called Laravel debugger. And now you come to master you know, all this stuff and then you move down to storage. Yeah, because you need to store your data somewhere, right? So every developer would come down to pick up a database. Okay, so in picking up your database, you might choose relational database, right? Or you might choose NoSQL database, right? And with Node, you see MongoDB works very well with that. So um, with PHP, I would mostly go in for MySQL, right? And um, also you can learn Postgres, you can learn MariaDB, all this stuff. Uh, you know, they are all relational database and they all have like, you know, things in common um, when you want to, you know, choose a storage. So 
Um, if you have knowledge on SQL, that's like a plus, right? Because essentially you will know all the select or all the joint statement that you can make that can you know, fetch the kind of res response that you want from your, your backend, right? So you pick one of these, right? Based on what you are building, um, you might go in for any of this, all right? And then you need a caching system, right? So um, that is when you pick Redis or Memcache, okay? And we can now scroll down a bit. You can see the next path is that I just moved on to here and up your game, right? If you want to grow further, then you can come down here. And then now you need to know about search engine optimizations. You need to know about, you know, the architecture patterns and then all those stuff. You, you just need to learn, you know, the different techniques of testing and all those stuff. So once you have knowledge on this stack, you can start building something, right? A lot of people are facing problems because they just don't know this and they keep studying and studying and studying and they go nowhere, right? Uh, now, because I'm good at PHP, I'm good at Laravel, I build applications like ecofeed.com and um, enterversity.com and all this stuff. Um, I'm able to, you know, jump to any of this. I can jump to any of this, right? So for example, right now I'm studying Node.js and uh, yeah, um, as part of my Node.js stack, probably doing some Express and also some NPM. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. And I mean, any of this that you might choose as your testing environment, you can also, you know, um, master those stack. So you see, after all, it is not difficult at all. It is just about you picking one, right? And then just like I was doing in my Laravel, uh, you know, my PHP stack, I had Composer. If I go to Node.js, I'll search for a package manager as well and then pick, you know, the package manager. If I go to .NET, then I'll probably be searching for another package manager, right? Um, Nuget package or something. I mean, there are a lot of, there's just some similarities among them. Just master one, master it very well, build projects in it. And then you are able to move to, you know, your next level of, you know, choosing any other thing, right? And once, you know, you understand any of this, like you understand the object-oriented concepts, your Java and everything will now make sense even to you, right? But that's essentially something that we need to talk about, right? Because you need to have like programming skills. You, you need to have like programming knowledge. So that is when you would, you would have to choose either C, C++, this Java. You need to get your basics right, right? And once you have your basics, um, it means that you understand Q and Q, all those stuff that are the basic stuff that you need to know. And this will strengthen your, you know, your programming knowledge. It's not, it's not required. I don't think it's, yeah. I remember one thing, I, I think I'm not talking uh, too much about Kati, but um, Kati was, you know, I remember I drew database diagram with SQL, okay, Microsoft SQL. Um, and I sent it to Kati and Kati was asking me, what is that? Because Kati came straight as a backend developer, came straight, picks up his PHP, mastered it very well, and he was pro in, in building, you know, production application, right? And from there, now Kati is also a pro here. I think you should, you should check up on katifrance.com. Um, that should be his site. He has a very a brand new uh, Node.js um, uh, tutorial release. It's, it's awesome. I'm going to check up for it. So just, just check up on it, okay? Um, let me zoom in again. So assuming that you are good with this, you've chosen your stack, it means you have, you know, a direction. It means you have a path that now you can follow, right? So we're good. You start building something on your own. Please, if you have any question, just put it in the chat. I'll make sure I have enough minutes um, at the end to answer some of the questions that you may have, okay? And um, now you may ask a question like, how long will it take, you know, to become good in all this stuff, right? And one thing I can say is that starts, you know, each day, maybe one hour. Don't do over one hour, okay? Just do one hour. And maybe in the first week, in the second week, no one is going to tell you to take more, right? Programming is that way. Like, I mean, you always, as you go further, you are angry for more. Then in your third week, fourth week, fifth week, you'll be increasing it like two hours, right? It's a good choice. Then you go like, you know, a bit by a bit, then you code like four hours a day, right? Then you increase it, right? Then you become a good programmer. I don't know, but I do that, right? 
And once you, you know, you get addicted to programming, then, ah, good job. Five hours of programming, six hours of programming, seven hours of programming. Whether there is Christmas, there's, there's any celebration, you're always coding, right? You're up in your game. And that's, that's the benefits, right? Now, um, just to take you, for, just, to, just to draw your attention to this, you might think that, okay, Dawood is the only one having the problem. He's probably talking about his problems. Trust me, it is not about me. If it was about me, I wouldn't be even here to talk about this, this in particular. But it's about the tens of people who are out there, right? And we need to help them. So I sent out a survey asking people, why do you think you want to be mentored? Okay. It was a bunch of questions, but this was a mentorship, you know. The question two was talking about mentorship. At 45 responses, check this fifth response. It says that it's been four years since I started programming, but I don't see improvement. I've been moving from one programming language to another because I have been getting somewhere and no one is there to guide me or mentor me so I could correct my mistakes and perception to move forward. Because of no guidance, I'm still at where I started. Bro, we are talking about four years, four good years of human being wasted. Actually, initially, I told you I wasted those two years. Trust me, it wasn't a waste. I mean, no knowledge. Those knowledge are very valuable, and then they really helped me to who I am today. I'm able to still go back in C++, go back to Java, work people through codes, all those stuff, because I learned, all, you know, I learned them. So it wasn't a waste, but I felt, you know, I wasted two years. Okay, that was before, but not now. So this guy has spent four years. You know, think about it. How many more people are out there that have spent like two years of their programming, you know, journey without being able to build anything? It's not supposed to be that way. Let's not look at it to be a norm. It's not supposed to be a norm, right? People are supposed to be able to up their game, right? If they have right guidance, they can actually get to somewhere. So later part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about, you know, the framework that I've built that can really help people, you know, upskill within three months, four months of, you know, beginning their tech journey, okay? And you can read the rest. I mean, I'm much interested in, um, you know, you getting what I'm trying to communicate to you, right? So we all have a responsibility, you know, to, to, to help people. Many people are stuck somewhere. They just need you, right? So I also wanted to understand them further. I asked them, okay, so among these languages, which one do you know? And you can see a lot of people begin, but not everyone ends, right? Look at this chart, right? You can see that um, the graph is saying that about 34 people say that they know HTML. Okay, if you know HTML, you need to know CSS, right? Okay. About 28 people said they know CSS, which means we have now six people have fallen down, right? God knows where exactly the rest are, right? We don't know how many people keep falling um, from the tree, right? And so you can see we have PHP, right? 13 people, Laravel, two. So people actually, they have like, you know, they are learning the HTML thing they are supposed to learn, <laughs> probably building the first web page and then sending it to people but they get stuck and they are waiting for you to help them. So we all have responsibility to take right here, right? Let me go ahead to talk about the shortcuts to programming, okay? I think short and cut, that should be like, you know, two words or something, but never mind. You need to code for 10,000 hours, that's for sure. That's a shortcut to programming. You need to do it. You need to do it over and over. And if you, if you followed my previous slide, I talked about start from one hour, increase it to two hours, then go to three hours, then go to four hours, then you can do it more, right? So I bet I have passed the 10,000 hours already. Yeah, that milestone is achieved already because I've been coding. I've been coding every day, like it's my thing, right? There's no single day that you feel that, no, I don't, I don't want to code. You need to code, right? So yeah, there is no shortcut to programming. If you were looking for it, there's no shortcut, okay? And maintain consistency, okay? Um, you, you started a path, stick to your path, specialize in it, you know, uh, build a project in it, right? Um, become experienced in it to an extent that you could, you know, list it on your CV and say that, okay, I built this particular project and this is what I contributed to that, right? And 
it would give you more opportunity um, that you've been searching for, right? Um, now, moving on to what is the framework I'm talking about, okay? So we need to mentor people, right? We need to help, you know, hold the hand of the other person who is beneath that, and then um, it continues so that people can actually have their, you know, uh, can, can, you know, reach to the level that we are also getting to, right? So um, think about this, okay? I didn't mention earlier that I'm a Microsoft student partner, but yes, I am. So there's this uh, mentorship program and the feedback that you saw, the histogram and also the uh, why people wanted to be mentored are some of the applications that, you know, applicants send in. It's anonymous, right? So, um, so this is how, you know, I thought of it, right? I thought that, okay, people are really out there struggling. That would have been organizing workshops, events, I've been teaching people, being online platform like this, talking to people, trying to, you know, get them to upscale. But I also thought about, okay, build your framework that can allow people to, you know, be able to find guidance, right? Maybe mentor them for months and leave them alone. Then they can be on their own. So in the first month requirement, which is a test case, we give them, you know, um, a test that they should complete a cloud, you know, um, uh, in particular, Azure Fundamentals, okay? So they spend the one month on Microsoft Learn, you know, trying to go through all the resources. And then, you know, Microsoft Learn has quite cool documentation um, that you can learn from. So just check on MS Learn, just Bing it, and then you should be able to get it, right? Um, I'm sure it will be shared in the chat so you can find it out. So um, get on Microsoft Learn. And then in their first month, they go through their learning path, master it, and it gives them a cool idea of what it even takes to build an application because there are so many technologies that these guys are exposed to in their first month. Whether they are new, you have experience in uh, programming or not, mostly it's recommended for people who have programming knowledge, but I see this to be a test case for my mentees, right? Um, second month's requirement is that now we, we give them a stack, right? They need to just choose, you know, the land stack or they, they need to choose their, uh, yeah, they, either they want to go to the Node.js, you know, stack or whatever, and then they can, you know, master the, the, their way up, right? So what we do is that Microsoft has really cool, you know, things that can help a lot of people. So um, there is this, you know, um, Visual Studio Essential. So if you just have an Outlook account, you can Google uh, or Bing on Visual Studio um, Essential and you would have it, you know, you'll be able to apply with your Outlook account and it gives you like one month free plural site trial. It gives you also um, one month free LinkedIn trial. It gives you data camp for two months. It gives you some cool, you know, free software that you can use and all this stuff, right? This is absolutely free for you. So uh, in the second month, we tell our mentees that, okay, now um, each mentor who is assigned to a mentee now get to find out what exactly this guy wants to do, right? They go through a series of conversation, try to come into agreement and then advise them. Then they pick, you know, a stack. When they pick the stack, we introduce them to the benefit that they can claim. Once they claim their benefits, they'll be able to do more on their own, right? They'll be able to continue their journey. Um, I mean, um, report back to us. Uh, reporting is also part of the framework that is being designed, okay? So right now, it was called Dow Degrees Mentorship Program. But after doing it for one month, two months, I shifted it. And I have amazing folks who are on board helping people across the globe right now uh, from Sambav, Gomolimo, and Sabia, and a huge amount of people. Uh, helping people they never, you know, they will never meet in their life. But essentially, we need to help people, whether we know them, whether they are black or white, we need to help people, right? Um, third man requirement is that they build a project, okay? So with the little knowledge they, they've gained, we take them through how to build a project in that particular stack. So if you chose PHP, maybe we, we take a project like, you know, um, building a simple to-do application so that they get a feel of how to combine whatever they've been able to learn and then become you know productive right and um, similarly we have um 
we have like the, the third month requirement, which allows them to build a project. Uh, I mean, it's not enough, right? They need to keep doing, but with this strong fundamentals that we think we are giving them, right, they'll be able to do something amazing. And we are super proud to see some of them had, you know, their cloud certificates already. They have Azure Fundamentals um, certificate, and it's it's good job to the ment to the mentors who are men mentoring these mentees, right? So it been it been awesome, and um, I shared this because I thought by sharing it, you could also learn it, maybe improve it, and then mentor people in your community, in your country, wherever you are, so that people can make the most out of their times, right? Now, huh, we've talked about a lot of things. We, we came all the way from, you know, my story, how people helped me. I'm sure most of you can relate to this as well. But tech is growing. How, you know, you can stay in touch while, you know, it's growing. That's the whole point. Okay. On that note, I would actually like to talk about what Microsoft is up to, okay? Um, Microsoft is up to a lot of things. You, you recently had uh, May. In, in May, that was 19th to 21st, the Microsoft Build conference. Just, you know, bring it again on Microsoft Build 2020. And you should find amazing resources. Uh, if you want to get started, whatever, you'll be able to find amazing resources that were shared over there, all right? So you get started. And so we have this low code platform, okay? And with a low code platform, you basically don't need to have uh, low code, no code. You don't have to have programming experience before you are able to build a mobile application today. People are doing it. Huge amount of people who never knew how to program are making it in the industry, right? And my good friend, and um, we've been looking up to him a lot, um, that is Sami. Um, uh, so Summit is one of the you know good people who have been able to use Power Platform to build productive you know uh, application for his you know company Hitro right um, where he works. So with with Power Platform, you have something like Power Virtual Agents. You have something like you know um, uh, Power Apps. You have something like Power Automate, which allows you to be able to automate you know business processes. You have Power Virtual Agent, for instance, to build chatbots. You don't need to learn any complex thing, just some drags, and then you need to just understand, you know, what exactly you want to achieve, and then you'll be there, right? And the amazing resource on Microsoft Learn to help you. And I'll talk about communities in a bit, but yeah. So um, props to my team, um, MSP Inspired. They did so much well. They actually built, you know, this simple application. Um, in one of the hackathons we participated. And to me, it was magical. We are all software developers, uh, Microsoft in, uh, Software Engineering in 10, Cloud Solution Architect in 10 was there. And we came together with all our skills. Then we, we leverage on the Power Platform. So Fox, if you're a developer, then it means that you even have an upper hand over you know, the tools that what you can do with Power Platform, right? There are things that, trust me, coding it and then you know um, pulling it together would take months to be able to do it. With Power Platform, you take like a day to be able to accomplish it, right? So um, props to Sundar Ishua for such a good animation. Um, Salman MKC, um, one of the folks I work with uh, in MSP Inspire. Um, so um, I asked him out for Azure Cloud Solution Architect, what are some of the things that people need to know? So I essentially asked some folks of, you know, giving me more of what, you know, in their field, what people need to know, right? And um, so these are some of the few things that he mentioned. So Azure Dev Test Labs, Azure Compute Options, AI Solutions, and what is really important is that as I'm here in this slide, let me even take a moment to talk about it. So imagine me being a web developer, right? And I'm not a data scientist. I don't need to learn data science to be able to infuse AI into my application because that's the future we are talking about. Right now, applications are able to reason, right? So in order to make our applications smart, we need to understand some simple concepts like, you know, um, infusing AI into our application. And instead of going from scratch to learn it as a web developer, 
Microsoft has built really cool stuff, right? Check on AI demos, I think just Microsoft.com, but just bank AI demos. And I'm sure you should land on a resource that can help you to be able to find, you know, a path or to be able to understand how this AI whole thing works together, right? Some demos are out there for you. But so um, you can leverage on the Azure Cognitive Service and then build an AI model uh, train and then, uh, I mean, get APIs to your AI uh, model that you build and you are able to consume it within your web application. Say, for example, you built an application that allows people to submit feedback, right? And you want to make the most out of that, those feedback, right? So say you have an AI model that you could just build and then, um, and you don't need to be a data science, just some drag and drop stuff, whether you are using Azure Machine Learning or whatever you'll be able to, it's so it's super easy, and you'll be able to train your model to be able to under, understand the sentiment of what people, you know, what your customers are saying and get valuable insight to it, right? And so this is Azure Cognitive Services um, right here and available for your custom vision. Uh, I think .ai is the, uh, the link to search for it. And... Uh, they are they are cool stuff. I wouldn't want to dive more deeper into all this, but if you want to learn more about this, you can reach out to Salman MKC. I'm sure people in the chat are not really technical inclined, so um, that is it. Then um, you also have like you have you know communities which are available um, for you, right? If you want to upskill, you have you are not alone, right? Microsoft has amazing Microsoft Student Partners community which is becoming Learn Students Ambassadors, right? So you can just search on studentpartners.microsoft.com. You have amazing communities built by MVPs. You have amazing communities from the Power Platform community and all those stuff, which are really willing to help you to build, you know, your tech, you know, career. I remember Dona once tweeted a very long time ago, I should, I should say, maybe um, almost a year ago, that um, code, um, you know, code should be like... Uh, it should be learned as if, you know, as though we learn English, right? You know, you're just a kid and then you start learning English as a language. Code should be uh, the basic language for people as well. This is one of the, I'm not quoting here direct, but this is what the content of uh, tweet was about. So, um, yeah, we all owe people, you know, something, right? People are looking up to us in the community for what we can share with them. And... Um, I keep telling my team that, see, no one owes you anything. You owe everyone everything, okay? Say it to yourself. I owe someone something. I need to help someone. And you don't need to know the name of the person. You don't need to know the race of the person. You don't need to know, you know, you just should be focused on how you can help anyone. Because if you're able to help someone, um, like they say, it always comes back to you, right, in the, in the near future. So, um this is some of the resources I wanted to share with you uh, and then tell you that reach out to someone. You know, as tech is evolving, you don't have to learn everything. Choose a stack, master it, and then, you know, essentially learn tools. Find out some of the cool things that cool companies are building like Microsoft or all the, you know, um, drag and drop stuff or the low code, no code environment that is built for you leverage your skills on them and if you want to do some ai fun stuff you could essentially learn the azure cognitive services to be able to you know uh, make your application um, respond more right so i think uh on this note i will end my presentation here try to see whether you have any question for me in the chat and, and i will try picking it up uh and then deal with it but yeah we all owe everyone everything and i in the in the, in the past months uh, in the past years have run more than 30 talks in person online is now um, huge but we also have um ms inspire you can just check it up on twitter ms inspire all right and you'll be able to find amazing you know um tweets that is coming from us and some of the weekly sessions that we run um, to help the community, to help the world to become a better place, right? Essentially, we are contributing to make, you know, empower everyone and every organization to achieve more. So it's not about your reflection, it's what you see beyond it. 
Thank you so much for having me here today. I'll be open up if you have any questions. All right, I think that was a fantastic uh, presentation you just gave. Um, you know, I kind of wish these online sessions had like applause or some type of sound that we can make. Um, if everyone in, you know really likes this presentation, like why don't you always go ahead and give us like some thumbs up, some smiley faces, some some applause or something like that, so we could all just let them know how much we really appreciate some of the content he just shared with us today. Yeah. Um, I was just looking through the chat really quickly just to see, you know, some of the questions people are asking, you know, particularly about some of those comments you made about mentorship. And one of the questions that popped up was, I think everyone agrees that mentorship is important, right? Yeah. But how do we find good mentors, particularly when it comes to minorities, particularly when it comes to black people, right? Like, where do we go and find mentors? Like, what's a good resource for us to reach out to? Yeah, um, okay, so I think Microsoft, had um, someone within Microsoft built this app. I might not be able to remember the name, but I promise my Twitter is you know permanent and not suspended. <laughs> so I will make sure to tweet about it. So um, it, it has this platform that you know connects. I don't know. I think mostly Microsoft employees with you know um, whoever who registers on the application. I I don't know how it functions, but um, essentially I, I I heard the MSP community talking about it that. There's this platform that allows you to, you know, find a mentor, a good mentor out there to help mentor you, right? Um, but apart from that, I think um, it's good I'm on this platform um, talking about mentorship. Essentially, it's a way that people would be able to identify some good folks out there that they might never heard of and are willing to help them, right? So um, I haven't personally seen platforms like that, but what we are building it's exactly finding the good mentors to be able to mentor people. And in particular, we are using the, uh, so the Microsoft Student Partner Community has like a gold student partners and they are like the, the highest level of you know, MSPs. Um, um, they've achieved a lot and these people are good enough to mentor students, right? And if you are looking for next step is actually find out MVPs, right? So I do not know this website very well, but I think it should be MVP. I don't know, something like that, but just Google Microsoft uh, or Bing Microsoft MVP and you'll be able to find out um, these amazing folks who are, you know, um, specializing in their field and chosen by Microsoft. And these folks are always available to help you, to mentor you, to get to where exactly you want to get to. And essentially, let me just end it by saying that these folks have been, you know, They've gone through proper scrutiny, right? They've, they've been scrutinized, so they 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 have you know what it takes to mentor you. And trust me, when you reach out to that site, you can just search for anyone within your country and then connect with this person to through Twitter or something, and that should help. But props to most of the Microsoft employees like Cecil and and uh, a lot more who are also active on Twitter, right? They are always like available that you can always, you know, ask questions and then they will reply you. We have Hank Bowman and many folks out there who are always willing to help. Yeah, I think that I think those are all really good resources and really good answers. Um, mentorship for me is always a very, it's not a very linear question to answer, right? Like mm -hmm. it's not a simple thing to yeah. do. Uh, it's simple to ask yeah. for, it's not simple to do. Um, only because yeah. I think a lot of the time particularly for us as black people, right? Like we want to find people that look like us, people that are local to us, mm -hmm. people that we could relate to and have certain types yeah. of conversations with that we might not necessarily be comfortable having with other people, right? Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know for me, I live in Florida and one of the things that I do or, you know, used to when I was younger in my career was, you know, I used to go to a lot of meetup groups. You know, I used to go to a lot of meetups and organizations and just be like in the environment. You know what I mean? Like start getting comfortable in the environment, start getting comfortable networking and meeting people and those types of things. Um, it's a little bit harder now because we're all online and people are social distancing and things of that nature. But, you know, um, you yeah. know, find, find different groups, right? If you're, right. if you're interested in learning JavaScript or .NET or if you're interested in learning about machine learning or mobile applications or whatever the case is, you know, find a local meetup group or a local hangout or, you know, I'm sure they have WhatsApp groups and things of that nature. And, and we have to like break past the fear yeah. of of being afraid to ask the question. You know what I mean? Because I think that's what happens. Exactly. I think that's really a problem.
Right. Like we have to, we have to not be afraid to, I, 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 really like, I need help. You know what I mean? And I think so. some of those things yeah. are really important. Um, let me yeah. move forward to another question really quickly yeah. uh, that someone was, was posting in the chat earlier. And that was in your first few slides, you had a couple of um, like different tech stacks and, you know, different uh, frameworks and stuff like that. How do you yeah. choose what tech stack to start off with? I know this is, a, this is a, a very opinionated question, but I'd love to hear your, your thoughts about like, how do you, how do you pick one? Uh, okay, so um, I think um, coming from this uh, perspective of how I actually got introduced to Laravel was pretty much straight, right? Because the guy felt like, you know, I had done Java and all those stuff, probably good, but I just don't know how to put the pieces together, right? So he was able to say that, okay, see, um, I've seen a lot of resources out there, right? But laracast.com has amazing resources. Check out there, right? So um, I think it's, it's often like, even when you pick, let's just assume that you pick any of them, the next question is how to find resources, good resources to this particular stack that you've chosen, right? And that becomes a problem because if I'm not able to get, for example, I actually didn't learn PHP that, I mean, I, I was in the Node community uh, before I went to PHP community, but all those MVC and all those stuff, they, they don't make sense to me, right? I ran a full course, I was able to pass and all this stuff for passing purpose, but I wanted to build something productive, but I wasn't able to. But let me just take it from this perspective. I think when you start programming, um, especially web development, you might begin with something like HTML, right? And your next step would be CSS, which is like recommended, right? So people would, that's like basic thing that you need to know. And the next step is that you probably find out about JavaScript and maybe when you are learning JavaScript, uh, it, would, it might be kind of a message might be communicated to you inwards that, okay, JavaScript is pretty not a thing for me. So I think I need to check out for some other thing, right? So uh, yes, there's this kind of, you know, testing and testing and testing that like you, you, you try to find what exactly you are interested in and what you think you can learn, right? And that is when you don't have, again, mentor, a mentor, right? But if you had a mentor, then the mentor would be able to, you know, um, I mean, might suggest to you, tell you the pros and cons of, you know, what this can, you, what this might take, this, what you get the idea. And um, with all the resources available, you might go in for one of them. So um, to, to finalize this particular question on my opinion is that, hmm, it doesn't have to do with, you know, um, settling, I don't, I don't think, maybe you'll come in and give your, um, your advice, but I don't think it has to do with, you know, you testing everything, but sometimes the resources available to you is what is most important. So if I had someone talking about Laracas being good platform and has amazing resource, I think I'll check that one up, but I just don't know how to answer it directly. And I think mentors play a role in that particular one, but what would you say about that? I think a lot of what you said covers mm -hmm. like some very fine points, some very specific points that I think are important. Um, mm -hmm. So one, I think it's important that, like you said, there are good resources, there's good documentation, there's a good place for you to find information, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if you don't know how to find the information and you're not going to know how to carry out the different tasks that you want to accomplish, right? So if I, if I can't yeah. figure it out by reading or having a reference or something like that, it becomes very difficult, right? Difficult, and then yeah. we, we think about like the mental strain, right? Like now you become very frustrated mentally, right? Yeah. And you know, you yeah. start to get upset and ah, I don't want to do this, right? And, and that's not yeah. a good beginning experience for anybody, regardless of however- That's very true, it's hit. <laughs> yeah, like regardless of how many years you've been in the industry or whatnot, like it, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think another very, yeah, I think another important thing that we should do is you know let's focus on like what exactly is the task at hand, right? Like yeah. you have like a focus, like what is your focus? And when I say yeah. focus, maybe you want to build a web application, maybe you want yes. to learn web programming, maybe you want to learn security, maybe you want to learn mobile development or whatever the case is, right? Makes sense. Like, yeah. Don't just say I want to learn programming. You know what I mean? Like learning programming is like saying like I want to be a doctor. 
yeah. from the perspective of, well, well, what kind of doctor do you want to be? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you want to be a children's <laughs> doctor? Do you want to work on cancer? Do you want to, you know, be a family doctor? Like, what kind of, what kind of doctor do you want to be? Like, you know, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, so as, as interesting as it sounds, and it's like the cool thing to learn how to code, like, like why do you want to learn how to code? And what do you want to do? And I think yeah. when you're able to answer some of these and, questions. And that, it will lead you to the next um, answer that you are looking for, right? I think it makes sense. Yeah, it'll make it easier. Like there's still yeah. a lot of options to choose from, but mm -hmm. it'll make it easier for you to yeah, start. Say, say, say someone has begun hearing more about data science and all those stuff and wants to jump on it. I think then he knows the path that he's choosing is not really just to become a web developer or to just become a software developer, but he wants to become a data science, you know, um, engineer or something. So therefore he will know what next step to take, right? Um, if yeah. I'm getting you right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Agreed. Exactly. Agreed. And uh, one last thing I think I, I tell people is that I see the tech world to be like, you know, it's like a virtual world, right? Which has like the which is imitating the actual world so for example we have police we have the military and we have these guys who are in charge of security right if you come to the tech world then we also have something that has to do with you know security and guys who are in charge of that right so yeah it's i, I agree with you it's about finding what is actually you want to do what do you want to become and then that would lead you to the answers that you want Right. Now, we have about eight more minutes um, just before we got to check out. I'm going to dive into the chat really quick and pull up another question um, that I want to make sure that we address. And so someone is asking, or someone posted this statement, in tech, it appears that there is a need to constantly update our skills. Taking mm -hmm. this into account, how do you stop yourself from overlearning and burning out? So I want to I wanna hear what you think about yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, I should have listened to the talk on how to do everything without burning out or something. I think it was it was one of these talks that we had from yesterday or today. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Am I stuck? sure you ask your people, ask them, what is actually do they want to achieve, right? And from there, you'll be able to give the right dosage to them. So how do you keep, you know, um, yourself without, you know, overlearning is actually choosing a particular stack. If you're able to identify what you want to do, choose that particular stack, right? And for example, when I took the PHP, mastered all these guys here, right? That's not enough. Like, I mean, that's like enough to build um you know interactive application maybe i might need some javascript somewhere but exactly but this would give me all that i need then the next step that i need to do is that maybe i've heard of um ai and all that stuff i don't need to learn a new thing right all i just need to do is to look for some of the you know the future that we are actually heading towards is that lots of you know things that we used to do manually or locally it's been done in the cloud and the, most of this are like, you know, uh, uh, a service that we can consume, right? So you do not have to, you know, go back to start as fresh, leave your career. No, you just need to look for, okay, what exactly do I need as a web developer in this particular application? Do I need AI? If I need AI, okay, the next step is that do, do we have any, you know, kind of, you know, software as service or platform as service that I could just, you know, use or something like that. And I'll just go in there and then pick up that without learning, you know, new stuff. This is how actually I, I think people can avoid over learning, right? Th that is what I was doing in the first two years of my career because I had no stack. So I was learning everything that comes my way, right? But yes, you would have PHP 7.2 today, 7.3, you have ES6, you were learning only JavaScript, then ESS comes up. Yes, tech is all about updating without a doubt, but if you have a stack, then you keep updating your knowledge in that particular stack. 
Yeah, that, uh, that totally makes sense. I think a part of that also lends into that previous question as well, right? Like when you think about like, what, where do I start? Where I start is almost like, how do I continue as well, Yeah. right? Because if you know what your, your target is, then you know, these are the things that I could ignore for the moment, you know? Yeah. I'll give you an example. Like for me, I, I most of my career I've built web applications, right? Yeah. And with building web applications, you hear things about, well, Ah, oh, there's Apache and Nginx, and there's this server yeah. and there's this server. And then now we're in a world where people are talking about microservices and Kubernetes and Helm and that and that and that. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, I could, mm -hmm. I could ignore that, man. I don't need that right now. <laughs> I can come back to it later and I can keep it going. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just want to say, so um, we got to cut now, but yeah. this was great. Thank you so much for being on here. Uh, if I folks want to reach out to you and catch up, do you have anything that you want to say, like last words? Uh, yes, so I think this slide is going to be made available. Maybe people might consume it. So I'll check up on Dawood Idris. Um, just like you see my name in front of you, that is the name I use everywhere, whether on my website, dawoodidris.com, or Twitter, anywhere at all. Just reach out with the same um, URL or handle, and I'll be able to share more insight with you. But thank you very much for having me here. One of the last things I think I wanted to do is to give credit to Maxim, right? I think Maxim is also a cloud advocate. Um, essentially, you know, having like a community like MSP, a Microsoft Student Partner Community, you get people who guide you. I think he ran us through um, Node.js stack. And from there, I have learned, um, I don't know, hours of, you know, courses on um, plural site and currently doing that. So thank you so much. And thanks to Hank. Uh, for everything that you know, uh, we've been able to achieve together so far, all the referrals and all the things. And thank all of you out there, Black Lives Matter. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you, um, Daywood, for, for that presentation. And thank you all for watching. And you know, stay tuned. We're going to have more sessions coming up um, just at the top of the hour. So bye, everyone.